watching Good Morning San Diego. Mike Castellucci is at the Salk Institute in La Jolla. Hey, good morning, Mike. What are you working on there, buddy? We Tur can't hear Turning you. on your microphone, maybe? <laughs> No, oh, I'm, actually, go. uh, gotcha. I'm actually researching our morning show oh, wait, oh. and uh, out? dissecting it. Well, it mm. needs a little water, yeah. it looks like. Dehydrated? Yeah. We could always grow a little. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> drought going on. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, the Salk Institute, I'm surprised they let me in, to be quite honest, because they do serious work here. Uh, and take a look. This is like a, a greenhouse type of thing. And, uh, and we're talking about, you know, uh, the major drought uh, that's affected the what 20 some states around the country and uh, a lot of the crops and so forth and food prices are going up well uh, right here uh, is where they study that and those effects and how maybe plants could be more tolerant uh, when it comes to drought these please alexis and david no plants are injured during these experiments uh, right and uh, dr joe ecker is here uh, he's the uh, plant molecular and, and uh, cellular biologist first of all tell us what these plants are joe these plants are called the Rapidopsis thaliana. They're essentially the, the lab rat of the plant world. Right. And uh, what is it showing you? Uh, we study this plant as a, as a reference for really all plants you know, that, that grow as crops. They have the same genes, but it's a lot easier to grow this plant. And we, we for example, know its genome. We've sequenced its DNA. We know a lot about it. And so you know when the uh, leaves wilt and so forth and, and what causes that. And what you're saying is uh, during a drought like we're having uh, that you could actually research it and maybe make a plant a little more tolerant. Absolutely. What Arapidopsis does, all plants do, and by studying this as a reference, we can begin to analyze the drought pathway. One of the things that happens is during drought is a hormone is produced. Uh, it's called ethylene gas. It's a colorless, odorless gas, and it uh, sends out a signal to the plant, for example, to, to know that there's a stress going on. Uh, people probably know ethylene gas if they know anything about it as a ripening hormone. Well, let's talk about that. Alexis and David, uh, how do you like your banana? Do you like it spotted? Do you like it a little green on top? How do you, how do you prefer? Uh, because there's nothing worse than a mushy one. Uh, you know, that's a little too much. I won't eat any spots at all. Oh, I see? So, so this one's good. So you don't Perfect. like a lot of ethylene. Did you know? Now listen no. to this. I've never heard of this. Uh, that uh, the reason bananas ripen is because of the ethylene. Tell us about that, Joe. Yeah, so I, I stopped at the grocery store on the way here to pick up some green, rather green bananas, which you probably wouldn't want to eat, not like Mike's. Right. And what happens is, is that uh, when these are being shipped, they're shipped green to the market, and then they're gassed with ethylene gas to promote ripening. I had no idea. That's, that's what, why you get a banana like this. But the problem is, is that about a third of all food produced in the world is lost due to spoilage. So if you could save that third of food, think about the yield. You have a 30% increase in yield. So that's all due to ethylene. So different types. A large part of that, that spoilage is due to ethylene gas. And so controlling ethylene gas is something that, that we're interested in by controlling the genes. Can you do that? Yeah, we can. We know the, the paper that we just published in Science has describing a protein that exists in Arapidopsis, but it also exists in all other plants. And by controlling the signal, the relay switch of that protein, we can control ripening. You know, this is why I'm in the business that I am. Uh, I'm glad there are people like Joe out there, aren't you? Who are a little maybe smarter in uh, that field. Uh, by the way, this is the perfect uh, uh, seasoning of eth ethylene for me. All right, here. We'll send it back to you right now. And Mike, what else did we learn in our port special about bananas by opening them from the other end? I know it. I had no idea. He told me this earlier. I couldn't believe it. Oh, this is good. <laughs> it must have come from our banana boat. <laughs> I think banana is the perfect food to have in the morning. Get your hey, potassium. Hey, Alexis and David. Yeah. Yes. Goodbye, good luck, and good fishing. Good fishing. That good. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I like goodbye, good luck, and get out. That's well, I'd, from I the don't producers. especially like that mm -hmm. one. But. Okay. All right. It's a, okay, never mind. <laughs> if you weren't here yesterday, we got a whole lot of Facebook uh, suggestions on how Mike should come out of each. Yeah, workshop. like to close each segment, mm -hmm. so he's going to try a few of them. Let us know right. what you think. And if you open a banana from the bottom, by the way, you don't get the strings. Yeah, I okay. hate Trying the strings. them out. That's the only way. If one sticks, let me know. Okay. We'll keep it. Okay. <laughs> See, See ya. Bye, Mike. How did he pop back up again? He's just hanging. <laughs>